Bookish love bugs. Today we are going to talk about sports romances, aka my favorite genre, and I'm going to talk about every single sports romances that I've read. With a few caveats though, I'm only going to talk about the sports romances that I've read and I own because I feel like if I talked about every sports romance that I read, it's going to take forever. Let's get straight into it. First off, we have the Playbook series by Alexa Martin. This is Intercepted, which is the first book. Then we have Fumble, the second book, and this is a football romance. I absolutely adore this series, 10 out of 10. I listened to this one on audiobook, which I really recommend. I think this one was done so incredibly well on audiobook because like the dialogue, there was a lot of like banter, but also the conversations between Marley, the female main character and the wives and girlfriends of the other athletes are very intense. And I feel like that on audio was very, very good. So I recommend this one on audiobook. But if you read this one, I assume it would be also 10 out of 10. But I read this one physically and I enjoyed it so much. This is the single parent trope, second chance romance, which I'm just a sucker for. So I feel like this one is just really, really amazing. I feel like these ones are super easy to read. They're kind of like classic rom-coms. They follow like a formula, but I feel like they just really work. Then we have From Luca With Love. This one is a book talk classic. Everyone talks about this, but this is about two athletes, which I really, really enjoyed. I feel like there's not a lot of books that I read where it's about two athletes. I feel like it's always the male main character that's the athlete. But I want to read more where they're both athletes, so they kind of have like this competition behind the scenes. This one is about two figure skaters who become partners and they always have this like enemy relationship. There's ton of great banters and like really sweet moments. And I think like deep down, like they're really both softies, even though they have this like really hard exterior. This is a big book and you can tell that it's a slow burn because they don't even like, this is like the romance. <laughs> There's romance like throughout of course, but like they get together like here. How? How? Literally how? Next we have The Sinbin. This is a hockey romance and this is like taboo age gap kind of situation. So we have Coach's niece, workplace romance because she works as like the social media for manager for the team. And then I think it's like between eight or 12 year age gap. I don't remember. But it's also like hookup and then like space and then like reuniting. Basically they hook up and then they don't talk again and then they like reunite. And I was really into those tropes and I thought it was going to be a quick fun read that was just going to be like really interesting and entertaining and it was at the beginning and I think it got to like page maybe like 150 where it kind of just like fell off where he I felt like was a little too old to be like acting this way not enough communication and acting almost kind of like immature where they weren't like expressing themselves really well even for her i think she was like in her mid-20s or something but they just like weren't communicative and they weren't sharing how they were feeling it was good then it got boring really fast it just felt like a bunch of like adults acting like high schooler also this is a little weird but like one fourth of the book is like text messages like this so it goes by pretty quickly but it's also like i'm reading text messages like this <laughs> anyways we have the heartless king but i just want to shout out this cover because i think this cover is so cute i thought i was walking into a college like hockey romance the pregnancy trope and just something fun cute but i was not these two main characters are actually really annoying. Like he is very, very unlikable and she, she just exists. Like she is just kind of there. Like she isn't lovable either. He starts off as like an absolute jerk and I don't think he gets better. Like he genuinely maintains being a jerk. But the backstory is that he was upset with some like inheritance and that his sister is engaged to his best friend, but that best friend was like lying about this engagement, but that best friend had also hooked up with his ex-girlfriend. So there was like cheating involved and he was also engaged to the ex-girlfriend. So it was like cheating and all of this. And it was just like a lot. I don't know. I kind of passed on this one. So oops. <laughs> then we have Mile High. This is a hockey romance, but I feel like hockey is not a centered theme in this book. I feel like it's just kind of like a possession. 
that's not what I meant. I meant that the male main character's job is like a hockey player, but I feel like hockey in itself is not like a main theme of this book. But honestly, from what I saw on TikTok, this wasn't as steamy as I thought. I thought it was going to be a lot more heat, but we have Xander, the reformed playboy, and then Stevie, who really puts him in his place and won't take his BS. Like, that's all great. I love that. I love that dynamic. And I love how like independent she is. Like she won't really accept anything less, but I love that she really had to work to get to that place, especially with like setting boundaries within her family and just like everyone around her. I love how they help each other build their own confidence. I think they like bring out the best in each other. So 10 out of 10, I recommend this one. And then another hockey romance. I think you know hockey's my favorite, but Icebreaker, I don't ever stop talking about this book. So I think right off the bat, you already know this one is a recommend, but I think I already said it, but I love when they're both athletes and I wanna read more of that book. I just realized how dirty my copy is, but this is the independent like indie published version, which I like love so much. I love the background and I love like the pink spine. So I'm not getting rid of this. But this is about Nate and Stoss, and they're both athletes. One is a figure skater, one is the captain of the hockey team, and they end up having to share a rink because the hockey player's rink got ruined from like a prank from another school. And so now they end up, like both teams end up having to meet each other a lot more than they ever have. Some of the tropes are like golden retriever boyfriend, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine, but just like amazing communication and taking care of each other, being there for each other. Like again with Mile High, just like really bringing out the best in each other and literally my comfort read. But I love this book. I never shut up about this book. I think I featured it on my channel maybe in every other video. I would say if I don't feature it, I'm probably thinking about it. That seems fair. So a uh, hundred out of 10 recommend. Then we have Hookshot and this is the third book in the Hoop series, but you can all read it as a standalone. And this is about Keenan and Lotus. And I love this book as well. But this is a basketball romance and it's also an age gap romance. And I think the age gap is like 12 years. It's also a single parent ish trope like he's a co-parent and he has a kid that is eight years old so it's pretty interesting how that like co-parent dynamic works when he's dating so it's really good but also check the trigger warnings on this because some of it gets really intense but i know kennedy ryan adds like a content warning before you read the book and i believe it's also on kindle if you want to read it on kindle but check this out Keenan is experiencing a lot of losses right now he was recently cheated on by his wife and he's just feeling betrayed and exposed in the media since everyone is talking about it he's like a professional basketball player and he was traded basketball teams to a losing squad I don't know too much about this trading basketball stuff so I just took the squad part from the team but if trading teams makes sense then I think you know what I mean obviously he's not doing like fantastic but he goes to New York for the summer and who's in New York Lotus she's a designer but a lot of barriers get in the way like his co-parenting situation his ex-wife the media and just like so many things so can their relationship work basically that's their story and how they work out is a really long journey but i think it's so good and it's just amazing and so heartfelt a little bit like heartbreaking but also heartwarming all at once and how does that feel it's all in this book so i've talked about this book before this is the bromance book club and this is a series but i think only the first one is about a sports romance and then the rest of them aren't sports romance, if I'm correct. But the first one happens to be about a baseball player. And this one is just so good. It's second chance romance. It's courting his wife, marriage in trouble. And it's just absolutely amazing. I think this one would fall for me like as a classic romance. Like when I think of like a romance romance, like this one would be like a staple. Like there's not a flaw in this book. Even the side characters are amazing. So I feel like this one just does everything so perfectly. 
I love this one. Next, we have another chunky book, and this is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. And this is the same author who wrote um, the From Love with Lukov. Yeah, From Love with Lukov. And I think this one is a totally different vibe. This one is about Vanessa and Aiden, and Aiden's a football player, and Vanessa is an assistant, but she quit, and somehow she lives in his house now. And it's an interesting dynamic, so forced proximity, workplace romance, but like ex-workplace romance. Aiden is a guy who doesn't show any emotion, like he barely talks in this book. So a lot of this is just Vanessa talking or like her monologue, like what is going on inside her head. Genuinely, this is like Vanessa and her brain. For me to read a 700 page book and not get enough of Aiden, I feel like that's really, really hard, but I did read this and it was a long time ago and I think I did enjoy it, but I think if I were to read this now, I don't think I would like it because it's so long and I think as I've read more, I've learned to like the dual point of view situation and this is purely just the female main character Vanessa's point of view. So I think this would just be too much of Vanessa and not enough of knowing what Aiden is thinking. Also, once again, 700 pages of just slow burn. Like they don't get together into, I wanna say like the last five pages. So that's very, very long. I don't even think they kiss into the last five pages. Lastly, I have a lot of books, but this is all one series. And I used to love this series back in, I think high school. And this is the Chicago Star series. And it is a football romance. This is a standalone series of a bunch of football players. And it's pretty entertaining to read. And I really, really enjoyed it. Even though it was written, <laughs> that's so funny. I did not expect that sound. Anyways, it was written a long time ago. The series started in 1994. So it's carried on until, I think it's still continuing. Like the author just writes like, so whenever. But I really enjoyed the series back in high school. I thought it was very entertaining to read. It definitely is a lot of like alpha male and kind of like stereotypical like sports romance where there's a lot of like hyper masculinity but I remember in these books, there's a lot of good groveling where like the men always like fall to their knees and like beg for forgiveness. And there's always like grand gestures. Like the author does grand gestures so well. And I think in one of these books, I think it's this one. I haven't read this one yet. I just know it's part of the story. I used to do this thing where I would read the endings before I read the book, but that was back in high school. I don't do that anymore. But in this book, he acknowledged it where he was like, oh, you want a grand gesture, huh? like this other football player did to her, like his girlfriend or whatever. And it was just like really funny. Like he acknowledged that like the entire football team does grand gestures for their girlfriend. The endings were always so like big and grand and like romantic. So I really like adore that. But like throughout the books, like the romance were always so amazing. So I really love this series. I would recommend the newer stuff than the older stuff. So maybe like 2005 and forward, like this book was really good. This one I did not enjoy. And this was like the second book in the series. So that's like an older one. This one was really good. The newer stuff are better than the older, I will say. So I recommend that. But anyways, that's every single sports romance I've read that I've owned. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Check out the description for all my other social links below. Check out my Instagram, my TikTok. I post on there every single day, multiple times a day. Thank you again. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.